About a decade ago, Fiat made their glorious comeback to America with the cheeky little 500 mini car hatchback. Now, as you know, here in America, we love SUVs and we love our space, which is why four years ago, the company introduced their first ever crossover to the States, the 500X. It was based off of the same platform as the Jeep Renegade, and it essentially competes with all of the other hot subcompact SUVs in the segment. I'm talking about the Honda HRV, the Subaru Crosstrek, and of course, the Jeep Renegade. Now, last year, Fiat made some pretty significant changes to the 500X, updating the front and rear styling, improving the interior ergonomics, and most importantly, replacing the anemic engines that you found underneath the hood. So this week I'm testing this refreshed 2020 trekking model painted in this rather boring shade of blue sky metallic. And the big question I want answered, has Fiat kept enough Italian flair in the 500X to keep this thing competitive? That's what we're here to find out. Poor little Fiat, they have such a bad reputation with us Americans. I mean, you guys have probably heard the acronym for Fiat and what it stands for. Fix it again, Tony. Yeah, that's not a great reputation to have. So I'm gonna be as objective as I can for this video because the 500 is completely refreshed for 2020. And the last time I tested one of these in 2016, I actually was pretty okay with the looks. It has a very cutesy, uh, very approachable, you know, very soft look to it. But Fiat decided to make some changes this year, so let's go over some of those. Fiat is a brand that's all about style. So as you can see for their only crossover vehicle, there's a lot of the traditional styling cues here from the 500 mini car. Now, speaking of which, the 500 hatchback and convertible and E and C model, those are all discontinued for 2020. What's left is the 500X, the 500L, and of course the 124 Spider, which is technically a Mazda Miata in Fiat drag. Now, last year, the company made some pretty significant changes to the 500X, and I actually really like the look of this. The last Last time I reviewed one was nearly four years ago. It was a 2016 model when it first came out. Now, one of the big upgrades that Fiat has been making over the years is the headlight technology. Now, uh, LED daytime running lights are gonna be standard across all the trims. This particular one here has an upgraded package that, that rolls in full LED headlights. You'll have LED low and high beams, LED uh, daytime running lights, LED fog lights down here, but you still get an incandescent turn signal, which again, this is kind of an inexpensive mainstream car, so uh, I'm okay with the incandescent turn signals, but just that change with the full LED lighting gives this car a much more premium, way more modern look, because Fiat's, as you guys know, are getting pretty dated. There's an all new 500 that they're just introducing across the globe. Unfortunately, that won't be making their way to the States just yet because here in America, we love our crossovers. Now, as you can see, the 500X is big by Fiat car standards at 168 inches long. Uh, however, when you look at something like a Honda CRV or Toyota RAV4, this is about a foot shorter in overall length. Uh, its wheelbase is 101 inches long, so it's a really small car still. This is going to compare very favorable, favorably, of course, with the last Kia Seltos that I drove, a Hyundai Kona, a uh, Honda HRV. I especially like the upgraded wheels, which are a new design for 2019 that came out. These are an 18 inch wheel, a five spoke design with kind of a gray painted pocket. They're wrapped in 215 wide tires. Speaking of which, this is an SUV and Fiat says uh, this has almost eight inches of ground clearance. So you could do some off-roading in this vehicle. Remember, it shares a platform with the Jeep Renegade, uh, so all-wheel drive is gonna be standard equipment, and the Jeep Renegade has some relatively capable off-road credentials, so the 500X will carry over some of that. I like the fact that all-wheel drive is standard. Uh, Fiat says the all-wheel drive system has the ability to disconnect the rear axle to help save fuel when the all-wheel drive system is not needed. At the rear, Fiat made some pretty big changes last year as well. You can see the taillights are the mo most obvious change. Uh, they have this new design where they actually include this little painted area in the center of the taillights. This is matched, of course, to the exterior body color of your Fiat 500X. The taillights themselves are an LED combination, so you have an LED uh, brake light, tail light, but the turn signal is just an incandescent design. I actually think the updated rear end is a huge improvement over the pre-refreshed models. Underneath here, you can see no visible exhaust tips hidden there. And then to give this more of a rugged look, this is kind of in a black uh, painted or plastic uh, area here with some integrated parking sensors. Now this is supposed to be an SUV, so it's practical, right? Well, not as much as the competition. With the seats up, you can see there's around 14 cubic feet of space. That's tiny. 
really tiny, like 10 cubic feet less than what you're gonna expect in most of the competition. If you fold down these seats, Fiat says you get around 39 cubic feet of space. Again, that's like 10 cubic feet less than the competition. So be sure to pack lightly if you guys plan to use this as your only vehicle. So obviously the 500 got some pretty subtle updates. Didn't really need it, but I really love the new LED headlights that this comes with. Just makes it so much more modern looking. Is this thing a CVT? No, I'm pretty sure this has a nine speed auto, but let's see what's powering this thing. Last year, Fiat did replace the old powertrains. They used to offer either a 1.4 liter turbo or a 2.4 liter naturally aspirated engine. I never actually drove the 1.4 because it only came with a six speed manual. That was the same powertrain in the Abarth, which I liked that engine in the Abarth. However, both of those are gone. We now have one engine. It's a 1.3 liter turbocharged four cylinder engine. So it's actually a smaller engine. It makes 177 horsepower and 210 pound feet of torque. Now that's actually three less horsepower versus the old 2.4 liter, but it does have significantly more torque. The old 2.4 had 175. And because it's turbocharged, you'll have more of that torque at lower RPMs. It'll have a fatter mid range. So in reality, this will be quicker. The old engine would get to 60 in around 10 seconds. This should do the same task in around eight and a half seconds, which isn't fast, but it is fast for the segment. It all goes out through a one choice only nine speed automatic transmission. So some of the competitors only make do with a CVT. Some of you may prefer the traditional stepped gears of this particular model. Now, fuel economy is rated at 24 in the city, 30 on the highway. That's actually not very good compared to the competition. And uh, to add further insult to injury, Fiat recommends that you use premium gas in this thing because it's a turbocharged engine. Thankfully, you do have a relatively small 12.7 gallon gas tank. Now, towing? Fiat actually says this will tow a maximum of 1,000 pounds, which isn't really a lot, but it is uh, pretty much what you expect in the segment. And as this one sits, it is heavier than most of the competition. It weighs around 3,305 pounds. Now, I know a lot of you are probably wondering, aren't Fiat's the most unreliable in terms of all the manufacturers? Well, if you guys do find yourself on the side of the road, you'll be happy to know that there are some instructions here for some warnings and such. Just make sure that you're able to read Italian. Now you must excuse the funny faces I was making earlier because the engine of this car is completely new as I said and it's actually not a bad engine. The 1.3 liter turbo has a lot more low end torque versus the old 2.4 liter. If you guys remember my review four years ago of the 2.4, I thought that motor sounded completely thrashy. It was noisy, it didn't like being pushed, but the problem with it is you had to actually push it to create any forward thrust. It also took around 10 seconds to get to 60. It was quite frankly, one of the most awful powertrains you could find in the business. And in this segment, most of the competitors have awful powertrains. Now I will say that my favorite driving out of all the subcompact SUVs is probably the Kia Seltos and the Hyundai Kona. Um, the Mazda CX-30 is also a nice driving vehicle. The Crosstrek is one of the top sellers. G the Jeep Renegade surprisingly is also one of the top selling vehicles. So the 500X um, is based off that same car and this new engine is a huge improvement over the old 2.4 because when I put my foot down, Aside from this really obnoxious beep that you get from the blind spot monitoring, uh, the turbo will, feels like it actually has a little bit of old school turbo lag. Once the, the RPM swing past 3000 RPM, you can really feel the turbo kick in on this thing. And it actually produces a nice noticeable shove that pushes you back in the seat from this wave of torque. I wasn't expecting it to do something like that. My issue is with the nine speed automatic. This transmission is the same lovely ZF nine speed auto that we all the motoring press love to criticize in the FCA and of course even some Honda and Acura products. And in this car, it's been tuned to feel like a CVT. I mean, there are times where I put my foot down, it will relatively adjust the gears that it's in pretty quickly, but then there are times where I found it sleeping and it will downshift in a rather abrupt way that feels like the transmission doesn't know what the hell it's doing. And then other times it'll adjust its ratios and I think I'm driving something with a CVT. So it's a very confusing transmission and it takes away from the lovely experience that I'm getting with this new 
1.3 liter engine, that horrible beep that you're getting is from the blind spot monitoring. You know a lot of new cars today have the blind spot monitoring where they have a, a little light that shows up to let you know that there's a car there and then they have an audible beep. That's probably the most obnoxious beep that I've ever heard on a modern car today. Thankfully, you can turn that beeping off but for demonstration purposes, uh, I wanted you guys to hear that beep because I did notice it when I first got into this car. The inside of this thing also got a significant update. I really like the new gauges, which, which remind me of uh, some Alfa Romeo products. The font was taken off of an Alfa Romeo, but they also made some other changes. So let me go over some of the updates uh, that they've made to the interior for 2020. On the inside of the 2020 Fiat 500, this is an area where Fiat typically struggles uh, compared to the competition with build quality, with technology, with safety. This 2020 model, first things first, let's shut the door. The door has a relatively solid, solid sounding thunk. Um, but as you can see here, last year they made significant changes to this interior. Uh, we have a new steering wheel for 2020. The materials in here are pretty decent. There's some soft touch materials on the upper dash here. The door panel here feels soft until you start touching it. It's actually hard touch plastic. Uh, my tester here has for a thousand bucks these upgraded premium leather seats with two level heat. I think the leather actually feels really nice. The seats are pretty comfortable, which is a huge upgrade over the last 500 that I sat in. But um, starting the vehicle up, you notice it comes with the smart key access system, which very much is taken from an FCA product. Remember they are owned by uh, FCA. Um, you do have remote start on here. Uh, the button to start the engine, I don't like where it is. I found the steering wheel pretty much hides it. It also feels kind of cheap and plasticky and it wiggles uh, when you actually push the button. So it doesn't really add a nice first impression of quality. Now, uh, the rest of this cabin, I actually think it looks okay. I like the body or the color matched panels here that you get. Um, on the inside here, but then some of the buttons and switch gear like the turn signal stock feels a little bit flimsy Same with the windshield wiper stock the buttons in here. They feel a little bit Fisher price plasticky They just don't really feel like it's put together very well So that's going to deter a lot of buyers what does look nice However, is the seven inch screen the way it's the way it looks the way it's laid out. It's just too small I think it uh, Fiat should have stolen the 8.4 inch screen that you get in some of the other FCA products. Thankfully, it has been upgraded, of course, with features like Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, which is nice. But again, the Apple CarPlay looks like it only takes up maybe like five and a half inches of the screen. So it's a pretty small display. And when you're trying to look at, let's say, like uh, the navigation display, it's going to be a little bit more challenging to see that if you guys prefer a bigger screen. It does include things like factory embedded GPS, which is nice. However, um, again, it is optional. This is around a $600 option to go there. Now, when you put the vehicle in reverse, you can see it does have a backup camera. It has front and rear parking sensors. The camera resolution is fine, although uh, it does look a little bit more grainy versus the last vehicle that I sat in, an FCA product that has that had Apple CarPlay and Android Auto and their Uconnect 4 head unit. So overall, the head unit is fine. The steering wheel, as you can see, adjusts for tilt and telescope, which is nice. You have your controls here to control that three and a half inch display over there. The gauges have also been updated. Uh, it has traditional uh, dials in here for the tack and the speedometer and then a little small helper screen. You have your cruise control switches over here for your adaptive cruise. You can change the way the screen looks where you can adjust you know, what the vehicle is showing you and whatnot. Uh, down over here in the center console, there's a little bit of storage for your phone. Surprisingly, there's an empty button over here where this vehicle is missing an option. I'm not entirely sure what that's for. Perhaps a heated steering wheel that you can get in some other markets, which is unavailable here. A little bit of storage area over here. This controls your nine speed automatic. It does include a manual shift mode here, no paddles on the wheel. And then this dial over here controls the drive mode selector. So the car has basically a traction mode uh, for slippery conditions. It has an automatic mode and then it has a sport mode. For 2020, there's also a new sport trim that basically is an appearance package. I kind of wish Fiat would consider doing an Abarth version of the 500, especially since they discontinued the uh, regular 500 here in the States. Uh, the glove compartment, there's actually two of them here, as you can see, uh, gives you pretty decent storage. Uh, the lid itself is damped, but not lined with felt. And then above me, uh, as part of a premium package, my tester has this panoramic sunroof, which is definitely unique in the segment. You don't typically find something like this. Only this car in the Jeep Renegade offers something similar to this. So. I'm, in terms of features, I'm actually really happy with this has. It also has, you know, a lot of the driver assistance features, but it is optional. Keep that in mind. Some of the competitors make those driver assistance features as standard. 
The back seat of the 500X isn't what I would call spacious, but it's also not quite as hateful as I thought it would be. Fiat says you have around 34.8 inches of legroom. Uh, there is this nice little area here where the glass roof kind of comes to the back, but this portion doesn't open. There's a sunshade here, but it lets in a little bit more light back here. There's one USB port, uh, two map pockets over here, no heated rear seats or rear seat air vents. I wasn't expecting that. Materials are also cheap, hard touch plastic, but there is some nice uh, leather that's on the lower part of the door panel here. And then I'm surprised there's no armrest that folds down here. That would have been nice to have. Uh, the floor is nearly completely flat back here, but really I would put two average size adults back here. Three would be a pinch. Now, I forgot to mention during the interior scene that the Beats premium audio system that my tester has, it's like a nine speaker, you know, 500 watt sound system. Beats to me, I don't particularly like them, um, the audio systems they produce, the headphones they produce. So in this car, I found the audio system to be incredibly bass heavy, not super clear. I kind of wish that Fiat would dump Beats and just use Harman Kardon as their uh, partner for audio systems because I think they would produce a much better sound system not necessarily my favorite in this car. Now, in terms of the uh, seating comfort and driving position, you sit up higher in this car, you feel like you're sitting in a crossover because this thing has almost eight inches of ground clearance. Um, it's a very small car, so I can see out of the front very well. This pillar, however, one of the most massive pillars that I've ever seen in the industry, you can literally lose a car in this blind spot right here. So I think that Fiat really needs to do something about that. Um, the side mirrors are a pretty good size and I do like this extra window that they added uh, here that helps you see you know, cover up some of the blind spots, but man, this pillar needs to go. It's just way too big. The visibility out of the back is decent. And this car has a relatively comfortable ride quality as well. I'm pretty pleased with how smooth riding it is. Uh, even though I've got these 18 inch wheels, um, the interior stays mostly quiet for the most part. Uh, the engine can just get a little bit buzzy, but it's not as thrashy as the old 2.4 liter. So I'm really pleased with the refinement and the power delivery and feel. And I would definitely say that the zero to 60 time on this car has improved from 10 seconds to maybe 8.5 seconds, a nice second and a half improvement um, there. So that's a really good you know, thing because most vehicles in this segment are slow and the 500X is still kind of sluggish, but no longer does it feel like a complete dog uh, and you don't feel like you're constantly being overtaken by everyone else on the road. Now, one area where Fiat could really improve has to do with the driver assistance stuff. You do get features like automatic emergency braking as standard, late departure warning as standard, but if you want things like blind spot monitoring, adaptive cruise control, lane keep assist, that's all optional as part of like a driver assistance and a driver assistance plus package. A lot of the competing vehicles are making that a standard and in a segment of compact, subcompact SUVs where safety is a big priority for a lot of people, I think Fiat should reconsider that and make those features included on all trims. Now, the one nice addition this year has been the inclusion of Android Auto and CarPlay. It makes the infotainment system here look a lot more modern. However, the seven inch display is looking very small. I just don't understand. There's enough real estate in here for Fiat to throw in the 8.4 inch Uconnect head unit, and it would just fill this area here much better, make this thing have a much more modern feel and make this screen easier to see, especially for those of you who don't like teeny tiny screens. Now, handling wise, the 500X is not one of the sportier offerings. Go to Mazda for the CX-3 if you want something sportier. Uh, the Kia Seltos also feels sportier, the Hyundai Kona. This car has a very softly sprung suspension, light steering that doesn't really transmit, transmit much, in, much in terms of feedback, but that's not necessarily the mission of you know, buyers looking in this particular segment. I will say that Hyundai is working on something like a Kona N with like the Veloster N's 275 horsepower turbo engine, that would add some nice excitement to this rather unexpiring, unexciting, you know, field of subcompact SUVs. Let's try a full throttle acceleration run here. I mean, 
yes, this isn't going to blow the doors off of most people, but it is a huge, significant improvement. The 1.3 liter engine is lovely, so I'm looking forward to driving this powertrain in the Jeep Renegade as well. It just needs to replace the 2.4 across the entire FCA portfolio. What honestly needs to be thrown off of a cliff is this nine speed automatic. I'm still not sold on it. There are times where it feels like a CVT. There are times where it shifts okay. There are times where I'm like putting my foot down here and then letting go and it's like jerky, 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 slip, 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 lag. And I'm just kind of like, what the hell is this transmission doing? The nine speed auto will probably go down in history as one of the worst modern automatics to ever come out of ZF, for crying out loud, who builds amazing transmissions. They've got an amazing eight speed automatic in a lot of European cars. So I just don't understand how awful or why this nine speed auto is so awful. Now, most of you who don't drive all these cars like I do constantly and just drive this thing very normally at like four tenths, we'll probably find that the transmission is smooth. You know, it shifts relatively well. It's just when you are demanding more and you try out all the other good automatics, you can clearly see the flaws in this transmission. So I can't say enough bad things about this transmission. It's just my least favorite of all the new um, automatic transmissions. So overall, the 500X, it's very nice updates that they made to the car this year. It should have been launched with these updates uh, when it came out about four years ago. I don't entirely think that it's going to make the 500X a huge seller in the segment. I mean, the Jeep Renegade outsells this thing by considerable margin. It's based on the same car. But if you do want something that's different, the outside of the 500X will still deliver a lot of that Italian charm that people you know, like about this brand. It's different. You don't see very many Fiats on the road. And for some of you, being able to stand out like that may be a deciding factor when you're shopping in this segment. Now, in terms of sales, Fiat had their best year ever back in 2014 when the company sold a little over 46,000 units. Today, in 2019, Fiat only managed to sell around 9,200 units. So clearly, you can see the company is in trouble. And it makes me sad because I actually think that the Fiat brand has a lot of Italian flair. It has a lot of character that you don't typically find in a lot of mainstream cars. Case in point, this 500X crossover. It shares a platform with the Jeep Renegade. However, after spending a week with the refreshed one, you wouldn't really know that it shares a platform with the Jeep unless you know cars very well like I do. It has its own unique character. The 1.3 liter engine, as you saw, has plenty of torque. Uh, the 9-speed automatic is a decent transmission, but there are times where I felt that it felt like a CVT. It shifted like a CVT. It's got a really comfortable ride quality. It handles okay. It's just a little bit on the bland side for me because I prefer something that has more performance and sport. So I would really love to see Fiat do kind of like a an Abarth version of this, especially because they just discontinued the 500 uh, hatchback I would love to see them add more horsepower to this, make it a little bit sportier, because who really is going to take something like this uh, off-roading? Now, I want to take a, look, a little bit about the sales figures. The 500X accounted for about a third of all Fiat sales here in America last year. Now, compared to the Jeep Renegade, Fiat only sells roughly 3% of the same amount of vehicles, which is a really small number. Jeep manages to sell like 80,000 Renegades and this only sells 3% of that. So Fiat, as you guys know, is in trouble and I'm not entirely sure this is a car that's going to save the company. I think it's a step in the right direction. I really hope they, they do come around because I think that Fiat still has a place here in America. I think electrification is something they need to embrace because um, that's where the new generation 500E is going. And I think Fiat should consider bringing that here. Now, if you guys are looking to buy a Fiat today, this one here is probably the most enticing model they make, aside from the 124 Sp Spider, which is really a Miata. This car starts at just under $25,000. This trekking model starts at $25,995. Now, my tester here is loaded up to the brim. It's got basically every option you can get on this car, from the premium package to the two advanced safety tech packages and whatnot. Um, this one here stickers for just over $34,000, so $34,550, which is a lot of money. This is like the same amount of money for something like a fully loaded Toyota RAV4 or Honda CRV. but keep in mind, you can usually find a deal on these at your local Fiat in terms of 
fiat dealer in terms of financing, in terms of rebates and such. So in reality, you'll, you should be spending well under 30,000 for something like this, which makes the 500X pretty enticing. It's not the slowest vehicle in the segment, which is nice. It's not the sportiest, it's not the most spacious, but it does have the most character and that might be a huge selling feature if you guys are looking for a subcompact SUV. But with all that said, I hope you have enjoyed my full overview on this 2020 Fiat 500X Trekking. If you're also looking to see the latest cars I'm testing, be sure to follow me on Instagram at redline underscore review. Like us on Facebook, and as always, guys, please keep subscribing to the Redline Reviews YouTube channel for all the latest reviews. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you all in the next video.